It's Cassidy with the Hype EXE, and we're here with Gren Radcliffe. Gren Radcliffe, yes. yes. He is a local Phoenix comic artist. That's great. And uh, so tell me a little bit about yourself and your corporate bastard. Well, I've been working on this project specifically uh, all, all myself since 2012. Um, previously, when I was m much younger, many years ago, I had put out this idea as the first comic book I put together, um, but I did not have enough experience at that time. So we just put a little bit of it out at that time. Decided to sidetrack it. I took a few years, learned a lot, learned a lot from artists uh, locally and all over the place. And um, taught myself how to draw in between that time uh, in, a, in a functional, kind of simplistic way, but in the way that works for me. And then just found it and decided that this was a good one to take all over and put together again. So tell me a little bit about like the comic, like what's it about? Well, it's about a guy working in a call center. He it finally drives him crazy, and he takes over the building and he starts offing his bosses one at a time. And it's a, but it's just a dark comedy, as as violent as it sounds. It's pretty, pretty slapsticky at times. So it's like a little bit of a combination of like horrible bosses. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, what brings you to Phoenix Comic Con? Um, well, I've been doing Phoenix Comic Con for the last three years uh, since I brought it out, and actually I'd helped uh, worked on con staff before then, and always just been liking being part of the scene here. And so, what's your process like artistically for your comic, and how you figure out your stories and all that good stuff? So I will start off with a rough script for each, uh, um, just kind of an outline for each issue. Um, from there I'll do a full script, uh, from then I'll go through just old school style pencils, um, a light box and do inks, uh, then I scan that in, clean it up just a little bit with the computer but I don't want to get too, make it look too computerized, so I leave a lot of flaws in it and, and uh, then scan that, get that worked out so that it can be easily uh, put down to print out and um, I'm trying to also, well, I have those files set so that they can also be made into web comics if I want to as well. That's awesome. I know that most of your comics look like they're just in black and white. Is there a reason behind that? Well, it's uh, really I know that it was going to be the easiest way to put it out. I don't have any idea how to do colors and not, not as well as I would want them to look. So it was just like, I'm going to stick with black and white. I know how to make that look just simple and crisp as I want it to be. So not uh, on like the Dilbert level yet. Um, no, like I, I could I could do that, but it's just like you know, it's it's not what I'm strong at. It's not my strong suit. So I'm just gonna keep it simple. Maybe some someday I'll have have a friend that will come over and and I'll let them do the colors. I'll I'm leave, I've have enough experience to know that there's certain things I'm gonna leave to somebody who has a lot more experience with it. And um, so what's your experience been like being like a comic artist within Phoenix? Very good. Phoenix is really, really supportive. They have a great scene here. Um, just the, sh the local shops, all of the other local creators, just, and then like the supporting scene of the, the conventions and fans and such. There's just so many really supportive, just wanting to see everyone succeed and everyone helping everybody out as best they can. Um, I know I've researched you a little bit and I know that you have your comic at like Lawn Gnome, so what's that been like, having like the really real small kind of homegrown thing going on? Yeah, uh, Lawn Gnome's a great example. They are so supportive of independent like style type of things that carry a, more of a zine kind of style, which really matches my com comic book well. So, and I always appreciate like little homegrown shops, and, as opposed to you know bigger corporate. It'd be nice to be in Barnes and Noble or something, but you know it's like I'm not going to get the attention or the support, and like I'm not going to have like a cashier that's excited about seeing my new book come come in uh, at there. So. 
So what would you say has been like the biggest challenge of doing your own webcomic and kind of figuring out your whole business? Time. Uh, the, finding the time to do it along with making a living. Because it, it takes a long time to get to the point where you're making a living doing it. And, but it's worth it. It's very satisfying with it. each person, especially at conventions, that comes up and is like, oh, I picked up your book last year. I'm glad to get the new issue. It's like every time I hear that, it's so exciting. So would you say that's been like the most rewarding experience? Yeah, that's, it's even more rewarding than, than selling things and, and making money off of it. It's just like, because that's usually just gets put back into putting more stuff out. Um, yeah, hearing people genuinely excited about it and meeting those people, yeah, that's the most rewarding thing by far. So did you work in a call center? Is that where you got your inspiration? Yeah, when I was 19, I worked in a horrible, horrible call center as a product support person, and it was just amazingly bad. From the calls we had to the managers I had, it was just all around very bad. But then ironically, while I was doing this book, I actually got another job at another call center. And it was pretty much the complete reverse. It was as best of a call center could be. So mostly because it was competent management treating us like we were adults. <laughs> so do you get a lot of people who come up to you and you're like, this is my life? Or I feel this way? Uh, no, but like I, I, a lot of people, as I talk to them, that anybody that's worked in corporate or cubicle society they they get it is like oh yeah yeah you nailed it here and it's like you obviously you've obviously had to deal with some of this yeah. well, that's awesome um any other questions what's your favorite superhero well, uh, yeah. I don't, i'm blanking i'm blanking um I'm trying to think. I actually, I guess I can go back to what I, what got me into comics when I was real young. That was uh, the original old school X-Force um, with Cable and Domino and Shatterstar. Okay. So. Awesome. Um, so where can people find your comics other than like small spaces? Uh, you can always find it directly online at corporatebastardcomic.com. And then, uh, but I'm in a lot of local Phoenix shops, uh, and then some others in actually uh, California and in Tucson. Okay, well, you've heard it here. We've talked to Gren Radcliffe, and that's it.